Hello, Empath Collective. My name is Dr. Eileen, and these are your empath tips, uh, encouragement, and support for star seeds, light workers, way showers, energy sensitive beings that are here to help our planet elevate its consciousness. I'm so happy to be with you. Again, Happy New Year. We are deep in two weeks. <laughs> of the new year. And I, you know, the energy is interesting, isn't it? Um, some of it's, some of it feels the same and, and some of it feels different. And uh, it's like, we're sort of tipping our toes in the water. I don't know about for you. It feels exciting to me. Um, I can feel it's like a low charge of electricity, but I can feel that it's going to be amping up very soon. So um, again, just, you know, stay grounded, stay protected, get ready, because for those of you that choose to use your beautiful, natural, organic gifts more profoundly, there are going to be plenty of opportunities in 2022, many doors will open for you, and you will be an instrument of love and light and peace and joy and all you have to do is be yourself. You don't have to do anything other than that. Just show up authentically, be you, and bring that energy, connect with the divine. The divine will meet you there, and it will be so beautiful and so helpful to the community and those individuals that are your assignments. So blessings with that. Okay, so I took notes, so I'm going to just read some of them because I don't want to miss <laughs> any of what um, has been shared. So we're talking about the journey of the heart. So as an empath, we discussed the initial first lessons. We did a, a look at a lot of those things last year, and those first lessons are designed to help you take really good care of yourself, stay grounded. Um, so that you can move through intense energies like a champ, you know what I mean? Instead of being overwhelmed, becoming dysregulated, that's part of the empath journey. There's, there's no shame in that. There's nothing wrong with having those experiences. But as we up level and as we grow and as we anchor and as we ground the energies, as we learn more tools, we're able to amalgamate the energy very differently than when we don't have the tools and we don't exactly know what we're doing. So take really good care of yourself, eat well, rest well, exercise, hydrate, surround yourself with people, situations and things that add value to your life. This makes your empath journey um, so much easier, so much smoother. And because now your journey is a journey in, through and from the heart, you want to be surrounded with people who are aligned also moving through their lives, you know, in and through and from the heart so that you feel aligned and so that you feel supported from moment to moment in all the work you do. Treat yourself like a queen or a king. You are no longer a princess or a prince. You are a queen and a king. And, you know, that doesn't mean that you're, you're the best and the only. No, we're not saying that. You're, you're royalty. You are a daughter and a son of the divine. You are a citizen of the universe. You are a child of God. And therefore, you want to carry yourself with a certain level of dignity and elegance and eloquence and grace and beauty. Now, that's going to look however you want that to look. If that's for you, a hoodie and a cap and some, you know, some, I don't know, <laughs> some Adidas, whatever, that's cool. Whatever that is for you, do your thing. You don't have to be anybody else. You don't have to dress like anybody else. If you're, you know, surfer type person and you're, you rock, you know, bathing suits and <laughs> a surfboard, you know, do that, whatever your thing is, but you can still bring that dignity and that grace and that elegance and that eloquence. That's part of what we're here to do as empaths. We're here to show the um, human collective that there's a, another way of moving through the world that is uncontaminated. There's another way of moving through the world in the highest light that always honors the dignity of each human, of each person, nature, animals, flora, kingdom, right? The fauna kingdom, 
and the elements and the elementals and the divine and all of the different layers of consciousness. We're here to show that we can, there's a, there's room for all of us to coexist. And there are ways that we can um, honor the consciousness and the life force of each living thing in beautiful ways. Not all humans are takers. Not all humans are users. Not all humans are violators. Not all humans um, disregard other people's thoughts and opinions and space, right? There are, are those of us that are still here anchoring the light, holding the light, um, with grace, with dignity, honoring the divine in which we are aligned with and that we we serve, right? So that's part of our purpose here. But you've got to take care of yourself as a royal ambassador. Take really good care of yourself. Be really good to yourself moment by moment so that you're always in that highest light and you're not exhausted. A lot of healers, um, their hearts are so, they, they have good intentions and they will give and give and give and drain themselves, they will exhaust themselves to the bone. And sometimes you'll hear healers um, or psychics or different people saying, oh, I just couldn't post the video because I was just so tired. I was so exhausted. Well, then rest, dear, beautiful empath. If you're tired, rest. Don't post a video. Don't, don't post a blog. Don't write. Don't exhaust yourself because the work will always be there. Trust and believe the work will always be there. And you are always divinely supported. You don't have to exhaust yourself. If you've downloaded, if you've channeled a message that is truly spirit led, and you're guided to offer it, trust that the energy will always be offered as well. And also the right timing, right? The divine timing. So abide in the divine timing. There's no need for you to feel haggard and tattered and exhausted and drained when you're doing your service work. So always stay in the heart space, in your cave, realign, reconfigure, ground and anchor. When it's time, get your command codes. Sometimes you get command codes or download, or you'll have a dream. And so you have clear direction as to what you're supposed to do, right? I mean, like a dream, like, like when you sleep, like that's how I get my command codes a lot. I get it, I have a dream. And so I know what to do. But just because you receive the message doesn't mean it's time to activate the message. Okay. Just because you receive the message, it doesn't necessarily mean it's the divine timing to activate that message. So that's part of moving um, the journey of the heart moving to, through, and from the heart, it's recognizing that there is divine timing. Sometimes I, I call it the divine five, you know, where there's, there's free will, there's the divine will, there's divine intervention or divine and divine collaboration or divine um, orchestration. And then there's divine chaos. <laughs> I'll be talking about those at another time. That divine chaos is the one that throws us all like, what? How could chaos actually be divine? There are times when it actually is completely aligned with your soul path and what you're supposed to learn and integrate. But the bottom line is energy is gifted, okay? Energy is gifted for you to um, create and for you to implement the beautiful offerings that your unique, beautiful soul is channeling from the divine to give to humanity. There will always be space. There will always be time. There will always be room. So if you need to rest, rest. It's okay. Take care of yourself. Be good to you. Replenish and anchor your energy. Okay. Treat yourself with honor and do those things that are required for you to demonstrate that you know you're holding your empress and your emperor energy and the divine will match your energy. You are a divine ambassador and therefore the divine will honor your self-care practices. So we're talking about you are an energy vortex. And so um, I'm gonna read some of these notes directly because I want to read them exactly how they were given to me. You are the sacred container that the divine is using in your corner of the world to clear energy, anchor and ground in a new frequency of love that is heart-centered, of course. 
So we're going to talk about vortexing the energy and we're going to start with the visuals. Think about um, a washing machine for di- or you know for dishes or a laundry machine for clothes. Think about a laundry dryer. You could think about a waterfall um, or a sifter, those of you that bake or cook, um, or a shaker, like a container that you shake, like you know, when you have liquid and stuff in there. Um, a whirlpool, a whirlwind, a tornado. I'm giving you lots of visuals right now. Ocean waves, anything that gives you the image of mixing energy, energy being amalgamated, okay? Or you mixing energy with another energy. So whatever visual you want to use, go ahead and, and visualize that now, okay? And when we're vortexing energy, when we're amalgamating energy, it's not passive, but it's not also not aggressive. Kind of like, I mean, I guess ocean waves can be aggressive, but not really, right? It's their nature. The ocean is in its nature. So sometimes the, the ocean wave comes in light and smooth, and sometimes it's, but it's not aggressive. It's just being itself. It's an, the ocean is a perfect example of an energy being in its own energy, right? So... Now that you've got your image of whatever you consider a vortex um, instrument, an instrument of being able to vortex or shift or mix or you know spin, you've got your image. Now I want you to focus on you being that vortex. So you be that waterfall, you be that tornado, you be that ocean wave, you be that whirlwind or that whirlpool. Being the vortex is simply embodying the knowing that you are on divine assignment and that the divine is using you in this moment as the instrument to create positive change, okay? So many of you are preparing to mix some things up in 2022 You are being activated as a spiritual vortex. You are that container. So let's talk about preparation steps. We did discuss some of this last week. I also did a little mini demo for you in last week's talk, if you would like to check that out. So the preparation steps always start with journeying from the heart, okay? So you want to be in your own energy. So there's a situation that is calling for an amalgamation, a vortex, a shift in energy. You start by being in your own energy, okay? Just be in your own energy, be aware, be aligned with all that you are, what your gifts are, what your talents are, how you move through the world. Do you channel? Are you psychic? Do you journal? Do you dance? Do you sing? Do you pray? Do you send love and light? Be in your own energy, be aware of what you bring, how you bring it, how you share the light of the divine with the community and people that you are here to serve. Be in your own energy, ground and be in it, be aware of it, okay? Anchor it through prayer, through meditation, through breath, through affirmations, through your self-care practices, through your intention, to move through the world with grace, elegance, eloquence, dignity, respect, reverence for yourself, the divine for all beings. Okay, that's being in your own energy. And then vortex, we're talking about preparation, vortex or filter out your own energy on a regular basis so that your channel and your container is clear. Okay, this is an ongoing process. It's not something that you just do once and then it's over. Like you may have to sage, you might have to use incense and Palo Santo. You may have to use, I love using um, selenite crystals. I have selenite all over the place and I have selenite wands and I just wand myself. And so this may be weird for those of you that don't, you know, use crystals, but those selenite wands, I'm telling you, even if you don't believe you use a selenite wand over yourself, you just feel cleansed. You literally feel your auric field just feels clean. You, whatever heaviness, anxiety, or stress that you may have been feeling 
you wand yourself with a selenite crystal. And then of course, if you do that with prayer and meditation and breath, it's even more powerful. But I just wand myself. I wand myself in between my sessions with clients. And I wand myself after intense situations where there's been um, emotional or energetic uh, heaviness, you know, density, energy, intensity. So it's an ongoing process. Now, You've got to know you are the container. You are the instrument that the divine is using. Nobody else. It's you. You're the one we've been waiting for. So whatever the situation is, it's if you feel called to it, then it requires you. And you control the energy of the situation, no matter how intense it feels and no matter how um, chaotic it might, it might feel. If it's your assignment, then you got this. Okay. You've done the work. You've learned and integrated the empath first lessons, and now you've been activated. You are on the journey of the heart. You are now aware that any situation that comes into the field, you can handle. If it is a divine assignment, the divine will meet you and match you and always give you the energy required for you to move through it. If it is um, something unexpected, not necessarily an assignment, but something odd or strange, uncomfortable that came into your field, you are still completely aligned, you are completely divinely supported, and you can handle this situation, you can remain anchored and grounded, you can command, you can ac access the command codes by dialing in to your connection with the source of everything, because you've learned how to go back to base operations or base headquarters, and always get what you need. You have done the work. Mm -hmm. The journey of the heart is knowing this. You have done the work. You are a pure vessel. And your work, dear empath, is sacred. You are sacred. Whether you realize that or not, doesn't matter if you're religious or not. Doesn't matter if you pray or not. You are sacred. And this work that you are doing is sacred. One of my um, managers from many years ago when I was um, an, an intern, um, he, I don't know that he would say he was an atheist, but he kind of, he either wasn't, didn't believe in God or he was really mad at God. <laughs> I'm not sure which it was. Um, but even he, when we, we would talk about the community work we were doing because it was a nonprofit uh, organization that I was interning for many, many, many years ago, he would say, this is God's work. This work that we're doing with the community is God's work. And it's so true. You are sacred, dear empath, and your work is sacred. So you are a filtration system. You are a conduit for healing, for cleansing. You're a conduit and an instrument for freedom, recalibration, liberation, you are here to unstick some people <laughs> from stuck situations, situations they, they unstuck themselves and they got themselves stuck. You are here to unstick sticky situations. So filter out what is no longer needed. Start by doing that in your own practices, your own self-care on a regular basis. Be in such a, a strong habit of clearing out your own energy field that when you are called to sticky, heavy, dense situations. It's just no thing. Like this is what you do. You just go in, you bring light. You just go in, you bring magic. You just go in, you bring smiles. You bring joy. You bring love. You bring heart. Do you realize beautiful souls that you can walk into a room where there's tense, um, communication or tense, heavy energy. People are, are despondent or they're feeling lonely or they're feeling discouraged or they're, ah, ah, you know, they're riled up or whatever. And you bring that beautiful diamond light and your energy can calm without you doing anything else, without saying anything, your energy can calm the situation. This is why I'm saying be in your energy, be familiar with what you bring to the table because you can walk into situations you may not even know consciously what you're walking into and you can shift it like that. Just being in your energy, pure heart structure, elegance, eloquence, dignity, 
reverence, respect, being in your own energy, knowing who you are and whose you are, knowing that you are dialed in and you are aligned and you are connected and you are divinely supported at all times, carrying that knowing, carrying that energy can shift a situation like that. You can calm people. I'm not saying you can help everyone, but you can be a light in this world and you can shift energy like that by just being in your pure heart structure, moving through the heart, being aware that the, this life, this life 2022 and this life for the rest of your life is a journey to and through and from the heart. It's different. It's different from being that dysregulated empath that didn't know why you were like this and what does it all mean? And I don't even want this. No, 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 no. You're in a different space now. You're in a different phase. And trust me, your 2022 is going to be mind blowing as you embody this heart space, stay in your heart space. So filter out what is no longer needed. Do it with love from the heart space. Finesse your energy so that the good remains during the process of you shifting but you can toss the rest out energetically, right? So when we go into these situations, these dense situations with difficult personalities, different difficult people, challenging situations, it's not all bad. There's, you know, there's a lot of yucky in there that we want to filter out, but there's some, maybe some good people with some good hearts that just got off track. So when we go in and we filter the energy, this is why it's not aggressive because we're not going in to just knock people out. And, you know, we, we are, we're different. We bring light. We're not now, sometimes the light is intense, <laughs> but we don't have a need to move through the world with power and control vibe. We're not here to control anybody. We're not here to make anybody believe that we're light workers. We're not here to force anybody to think the way we think or do what we do. No, we're, we're just here to serve. And some are going to be open to that and others are not. And it's all good because your journey as an empath, first and foremost, is for you. It's for you to know who you are, for you to learn how to be in your own energy and to realize how just magical that is. Being that dialed in to spirit. And oh my gosh, you can connect with spirit in the trees and you can connect with spirit in the mountains and you can connect with spirit in your ancestors and spirit in your own higher self and all the multidimensional ways that you show up as human and as spirit, as soul, as light, as healer, as teacher, as friend, as sibling, all the ways that the divine is expressing itself through you be in your own energy that's the whole purpose of this whole empath experience it's knowing who you are that you're dialed in you're connected and yes there's work to do but we're not hard timing it we are just flowing with the energy that is always gifted to us so clear your own energy often, as I said, but right before you go into this work, if you need to shift some energy in a situation, clear your own energy before you activate your energy vortex. So it's a bit of a DIY, do it yourself. You know, you want to clear, you want to cut, dissolve, release anything that is no longer serving. If you've got an attitude, if you've got some anger, if you've got some frustration, if you're, you know, just in a lower vibration, cut that, clear that, release that anchor in the new energy, get the new command codes, receive the new energy, just like that, just like that, shift your own energy be in that space, be in neutral receiving mode, open channel, open consciousness, open channel, open consciousness, let the divine impart what is needed so that you can give it from the situation. We don't want to give to the community or the situation or the project or the people that we are assigned to. We don't want to give them from low vibe. We don't want to give them, give to them from low energy. We always want to give and serve from the highest light. That's the empath journey from the heart. We're not giving from low space. We're giving from that highest light that serves the highest, most divine good. Okay. So we always clear what needs to be released from ourselves first. This is why we're constantly doing our work. That's why it's a journey to, through, and from the heart, because after you've given and done your service work, and you go back into the heart, hibernate for a while, 
heal, replenish your energy. Then you go back out, you move from the heart, you move towards the heart, you move with all the offerings that you're giving and doing for people, you're moving through the heart. Okay, there's a lot of situations that if you don't move through the heart and you're in, just in your humanness, they will be very difficult to navigate. Different difficult personalities, people who want to bait you, people who want to, you know, cantankerous people. For example, I, I have you know narcissists in my life. Um, some of them were family members. Uh, some t- occasionally, not so much anymore. Sometimes they'd be clients. Sometimes they've been pe- colleagues. Different narcissistic personalities, you know, uh, can drive you crazy. <laughs> Sociopathic personalities, whoa. I mean, oh my goodness. So, but when you are abiding in your own energy and you are aligned with the divine, it's so much easier to navigate these difficult personalities because instead of responding from your humanness, maybe your humanness wants to give them a piece of their, your mind and, you know, tell them to, to go stick it where the sun doesn't shine or whatever you want to say. But like when you're in the light and you're really dialed in and you're moving from the heart, you'll be surprised how these people with their personality disorders and their intensities and their power and control and their judgments and all their things, how it just doesn't phase you and how you just stay in your peaceful Zen zone, peaceful Zen zone. <laughs> I love that. Stay in your peaceful Zen zone and you respond versus react because you're listening to what the divine wants has to say about the situation and you're speaking accordingly. So let's see. Um, so now we're going to get into a vortex energy exercise. And we talked a little bit about this in the demo that I did the other day. Now we're going to get into it a little bit more. So I'm just going to invite you to Take some breaths, take a nice breath in through the nose and out through the nose. Drop your shoulders down away from the ears. In through the nose and out through the mouth. And breathe however is comfortable. In through the nose, out through the nose, and through the nose, out through the mouth. Begin to allow your right and left brain hemispheres to sync up, allow your brain and your body to harmonize. We're calming the nervous system with each breath. And the more you practice breath and meditation and you dial into the divine, this is not complicated. It just becomes a very, very smooth, easy opportunity to connect being in your own energy. So now what I'd like you to do is breathe into your root chakra, which is below the navel, okay? And this is, um, if you're not familiar with chakras, then go ahead and um, do a little research so you know exactly where they are in the body. We're going to deal with the seven chakras at this point. Chakra, chakra, I've heard it both ways. I'll probably say both. Breathe into your root chakra. So imagine this is your root chakra. And you breathe in, bring the breath in, deepen up at your heart space. So deepen that breath at the heart. And then as you exhale, let the breath come out of your crown, okay? So we exhale out of the crown chakra. And then we begin to spin the energy on the exhale but I wanna now just practice breath. So now let's inhale in through sacral chakra, which is below the navel, but above root. Inhale in, deepen at the heart. Exhale out of your crown. And imagine the breath or the energy spinning, okay? Now let's inhale in through the solar plexus chakra, which is above the navel. Deepen the breath at the heart. Exhale out of the crown and imagine the energy spinning. Okay, so hopefully you're getting the idea. Go at your own pace. Now let's breathe into the heart chakra. Deepen in the upper heart. Exhale out of crown. Mm 
Good. Let's inhale in through the throat chakra. So now we're not going to go back down to heart. We're just going to keep going up. Okay. So inhale into throat. Deepen. Exhale out of crown. Okay. Now let's inhale in third eye chakra. Okay. When you're inhaling into your third eye chakra, you are also sending breath to the pineal gland and, they, and that can help. There's a lot of ways to de decalcify the pineal gland, but don't forget to breathe into your pineal gland. Okay. So now let's breathe into third eye. Deepen. Exhale out of crown. Good. Now let's inhale into crown. Inhale breath in. Imagine coming in from the sides of your brain or your temples, inhaling into crown, deepen, exhale out. So let's keep doing this, okay? Just practice at your own pace. You can go back down to root chakra, you can breathe into any chakra that you want, go up, exhale out of crown. And as you exhale, begin to imagine the whirlwind, the tornado, the vortex, or the waterfall, if that works for you, whatever visual you want to use, but allow the end of that energy to begin to spin, bring your energy into the situation. Now, I'm showing you how to vortex your own energy, but even when you are working with others, you will have them breathe into their own chakra, okay? Breathe up, deepen, exhale, and they will exhale and vortex the energy in their own field, just like I'm showing you how to do, but you're going to be holding space for them, and you're going to be spinning that energy as it comes out, as they exhale it, you're going to be spinning it and bringing in your light and your energy and your beautiful intentions and the divine will match you and meet you there. So make your vortex larger with each breath, okay? Be in your own energy. Notice how it starts off initially, you know, feeling kind of dense or heavy, but as you keep the process going with intention, notice how it begins to lighten up. The flow of energy around you with breath becomes lighter. Sometimes you feel a little tingling. Sometimes you feel a little bit of sensation in different parts of your body. So keep breathing. Breathe in. Exhale. Keep breathing. Keep releasing. Keep spinning the energy around you. Keep staying in your own energy, staying in your power. Now, I'm encouraging you to practice this at home. Start with your root chakra, then move to sacral, then move to solar plexus, then move to heart, then move to throat, then move to third eye, then move to crown, all the while holding the breath, Spinning the energy on the exhale, making the vortex bigger, being in your own energy, allowing the divine to meet you, being engaged with that divine energy flow that happens with breath. Breath is an alignment tool. Breath always aligns us back to base. So if we're looking at this just non-spiritually, just clinically, breath is the alignment tool. It syncs up right and left brain hemispheres. It syncs brain and body and energy, okay? But if we are bringing this into spirit, into our spiritual consciousness, breath is the alignment tool that brings us back to the source. Breath, some people call it the Holy Spirit, the wind of God. There's so many different names. Breath is an alignment tool. So learn to use breath, learn to work with breath, learn to be in your own energy and recognize how there's really no difference 
between that divine energy and your energy. There's really no difference. There's no discrepancy. Close the gap. Close the gap between what you believe is outside of you and what you know is inside of you. Close the gap. Close the gap. Close the gap. One energy. One flow. One divine flow. You're connected. You are aligned. You've done the work. And the divine is working through you. Okay? Now, again, you don't have to do all the movements that I do. We divine feminines, <laughs> we do a lot of this stuff, you know? I think a lot of the divine masculines do too, but we divine feminines, I think it's because we, you know, we like to go out, we're, we're in nature, we like, to, we like to dance with the wind, we like to dance with the trees, we just feel the energy and we, it seems like it's part of our nature, you know? So I feel like that is partially why we do it. But of course, you don't have to. The main thing is the concept. I want you to recognize that you're a conduit, you're an instrument, and you can vortex energy, you can spin it, you can shift it. And it's not this big, complicated, magical thing, okay? It is, it is magical because you're magical because the divine is magical. But it's, I'm showing you all the basic things. Keep your heart pure, eat right, get rest, stay hydrated, have pure intentions, get, your, get those command codes, move from the heart, live from the heart, have integrity, be authentic. That's it, people. Okay, you want to be magical? Do those things. And you will touch the heart of the divine and the divine will match your energy and be with you moment to moment in all that you do. So breathe and with each chakra, Breathe deep in, exhale from crown, and then spin it, spin it, spin it, shift it, shift it, vortex it, okay? So now, this is for nesting the energy, the energy of spirit. So acknowledge your ability to clear your own energetic field and do this often, okay? I want you to imagine that if you started a business, maybe some of you do have your own business. If you started your own business, let's say you bought a building, a warehouse, and you poured everything, all your financial everything into it. Well, in those early days, before you have a lot of staff, a lot of people helping you, you might be the one that has to you know, empty the trash, clean the toilet. Um, you know, dust the furniture, in addition to whatever you've got to do to run your business, you may have to do some of those basic things, vacuum, and, you know, wash stuff off, and just make sure everything's nice and tidy, before you actually have people that can do that for you. And it's really, there's been a lot of um, research done on entrepreneurs and very successful business people, nobody ever started off just having a staff. Nobody ever started off just having an entourage or having an administrative assistant. Super uber successful people at some point um, took made complete ownership over their business from start to finish. They knew every inch of it. They knew everybody who was working for them and they knew everybody's job so that they could do everybody's job. In fact, most successful business people, they know they're successful because they know each and every detail and each and every aspect of their job. And they teach the people that they hire how to do it the way that they want it to be done. So if that person leaves or it doesn't work out or they go start their own business, the business owner can keep functioning because they know how to do all their own stuff because it's their business and they take ownership of it. They've got iron grip control over their business. Okay. And I'm encouraging you in a non um, aggressive way to have iron grip control over your energy, have iron grip control over your power, have iron grip control over your divine essence, your divine feminine essence, your divine masculine essence, however you show up, however the divine works through you, be in ownership of it, understand your energy, be in your energy, you know, align with your energy unapologetically all the time. And be in flow, knowing that the divine is supporting you. So, you know, if you were that business person, you would clean what needs to be cleaned. You would vacuum when you needed to vacuum. If there was a plumbing problem, you'd fix it. You might fix it yourself. You would throw trash out 
you would clean toilets, you would do whatever needs to be done. And so keeping people or energies out um, that are not welcome is your job. It's nobody else's job. It's your job. Take full responsibility for what does not belong in your field and you vortex it out. Learn to vortex, keep your energy field clean, okay? Remove what is no longer needed. It doesn't have to be a big deal. Just remove it. Just clean up the mess. If a mess shows up, if somebody spills something in your lobby and you just started your business, you're going to go grab that mop. You're going to go clean it up, okay? If somebody vomits you know, on your couch, as disgusting and gross as that is, you're, you can't just let it sit there. You've got to figure it out. You're either going to clean it up yourself or you're going to hire somebody to do it, but you've got to take action is my point, right? So if anything should show up in your field, even though you're moving from the heart and you're doing your best, you're walking with integrity and authenticity, showing up, you know, in the most aligned way that serves the highest light and the highest good of all, there will be some occasional messes that show up in your field. There may be some um, discomfort, you know, humble yourself, be in healthy ego, just take full responsibility to clean up the mess yourself, filter it out. Don't question, well, how did this happen? How did that happen? I thought I was supposed to be so aligned. Why is this? Don't go there. We're living from the heart. We're moving from the heart. We're journeying through the heart. And there's a mixed bag of energy in the world, right? As we interact with humans, there's a mixed bag of energy in terms of um, what we're going to encounter. You stay in your high vibration, your high energy Vortex out what is no longer needed. Release what no longer serves. Use breath. Know that you are divinely aligned and everything is fine. Always remember that the divine has your back in each and every situation and all is well. Okay? You can remain pristine. You can remain online, aligned. Just release any unhealthy ego that makes you feel like things are supposed to be perfect and you shouldn't be dealing with this and that shouldn't. No. Our journey from the heart and through the heart and to the heart, it's our own individual journey. It doesn't mean that what's happening outside of the sacredness, the sacred container of our heart space shell is, you know, also on the same page. Sometimes what's happening outside of our sacred safe container is chaotic and crazy and unhealthy and dark and dense and sometimes scary. That's why we're here. That's why the empath is with all their, their sensitivities, with all their energetic um, knowings, with all their psychic power, with all of their natural healing in their hands. This is why we're here. We're here to bring the light of the divine into dark situations and metaphorically speaking, snatch some folks from hell from the hells that they're experiencing, the energetic hells, okay, that they are trapped in, that they're stuck in. We're not going to be able to save everybody. Know that empaths. I know that doesn't feel great. Some of you are like, good, I don't want to save. <laughs> I know most of you, it's heartbreaking when we see people living um, a life of self-destruction when we know in our heart of hearts, it doesn't have to be this way. When we know it could be so different. They could, we want them to feel joy. We want them to feel peace. We want them to feel that bliss of being aligned and dialed in and having a divine connection. And when we see people um, continuing to choose situations and circumstances that are less than what they deserve and less than what they have to experience, it can be hard. It can be painful. And yet they have free will. It's their free will to do whatever they want and to live their lives the way they want. It's their lessons to learn, um, their karma, and maybe not our assignment. And so learning to live and let live and let everybody just be where they are, showing up to the best of our ability, just being us and letting everybody have their experience and honoring whatever that experience is, it, it, it can be initially challenging. And then it becomes glorious because you realize, you know what, at, at any given moment, if somebody chooses to access divinity and align their life with all that is possible, it can shift like that. 
And so I don't have to feel sorry for someone who in this moment isn't choosing to be their highest version and who isn't living a life that is in the highest light. They're exercising their free will. I'm also going to exercise my free will as an empath and be the best version of myself. So of course, there will be times when we will benefit from learning how to clear the energy from a teacher or a healer. I'm certainly not saying don't get any extra training. You know, if you're going to be a, a Reiki healer, um, then go and get the training to be that. If you're going to be an Ayurvedic, you know, healer or massage therapist, get all the trainings that you need. But just know as empaths, we have some natural, organic, authentic power, anointing, gifts, magic, um, abilities that we were born with. Okay. They're within you. And if you allow the divine to um, expose you to the truth of all that you are, it may be mind blowing for you how magical you actually are and what you carry within your field of divinity that can actually change the planet for the better. So when you go to a master or a teacher or a healer to learn, if you choose to do that, then integrate what you have received and learn so that you can bring it back into your own path and move forward in your journey with your own energy signature. The offerings that you give to the planet, that's your lineage, okay? It may have a little sprinkle of this and a little sprinkle of that. Some of you may use some of what I'm sharing and, and um, teaching, and you may incorporate that in the work that you do, but you're going to find your own path. You're going to be in your own energy. Okay. So the journey from the heart is owning our own energy field, vortexing our own energy, cleaning up our own mess as needed, releasing what no longer serves, closing doors and cycles, repatterning where necessary, embracing the new moment to moment, breath by breath. And the way we do that is we vortex our energy field, whether it's crystals or sage, whether it's Palo Santo or incense, whether it's prayer, meditation, hikes in nature, salt baths, whatever you do, okay? Vortex the energy, keep your field clear and clean. Shift out what is no longer needed while shifting in what is helpful, what is useful. This recalibrates and balances the energy. It balances your own energy. And when you're doing your service work in the community, it shifts and balances the energy of the situation so that it remains fresh. We vortex the energy so that nothing is stale, so that it's not contaminated. We want to just cleanse like a waterfall. We want to cleanse. We want to shift. We want to balance situations. That's part of our work. It's big work. It's huge work. We keep things fresh where the divine keeps things fresh. We're the instrument and uncontaminated. We clear the energy. And after we clear the energy, after every situation, we anchor and we ground. In love and light, we dissolve the cords that bind us or connect us to anything that's no longer serving. And we release those things. In love and light, we let go of those. And we're allowing those things to let go of us. We're releasing those old energies. We're releasing ourselves in love and light. We're allowing ourselves in a new unit of time to be free. We anchor and ground in the new energy that we create. So now I don't know <clears throat> what it's like for you, but like my whole, my, my hands are tingling. Okay. Um, and, and if you do this with intention and breath, you'll notice your, your hands, your body will react because your nervous system, your brain, right and left brain hemispheres, your cells, your organs are responding to this divine connection that you have, this knowing that you are in divine oneness with God, source, creator of all that is creation, the all of creation, your ancestors 
your angels, your spirit guides, you become aware on all levels, physical, energetic, emotional, mental, spiritual, soul, every part of you becomes aware that you are divinely connected and there is no separation. So when you move with the energy, when you vortex the energy, when you're in your own energy and you embrace the situation with love and light, you shift out, you clean out that energy that was once contaminated. Now it's new, now it's fresh and you feel it. Okay. You may not feel it. It's okay. You don't have to be caught up in feeling sensation, but I, I want you to know if you do feel sensation, it's all good. It's part of the divine energy that you are working with. It's the structure that you are working with the divine beings that you are working with. Okay. Don't be afraid to work with your angels and your ancestors. They love you and they're here to support you. So before I let you go for today, um, please remember to hydrate, rest, eat, journal what comes, express gratitude for the new perspective, the new integration, and hold the new vibration once you've shifted the energy, see how long you can hold it. How long can you hold that bubble? How long can you hold that new shift, that new energy, that new vibration? How long can you sit in it? How long can you maintain it? Can you bring it into your interactions at work? Can you bring it into your relationships? Can you bring it into your interaction with your garden and your pets? Can you bring it into your romantic partnership? How long can you hold this energy? Can you bring it into the parts of your body that are feeling pain or aching that need love, light, support? How long, how long, how long, how long, how long can you hold it? Okay. Ah. <laughs> so in this new energy of 2022, beloved impacts, let's clear what is not aligned quickly. Let's realign to what is aligned, clear, release, anchor and ground. May you swim in the new integrations that are being offered in 2022. All that is revealed to your heart while you journey to and through and from the heart. May your journey be confident with a secure knowing that all is well in this present moment. And all that is yet unfolding is aligned with your divine purpose. Blessings, my beautiful brother and sisters of the Empath Collective. Have a beautiful week. I'll see you again.